It's Tuesday, April 30th, 2024. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. I want to thank everybody for coming over here. We have so much to talk about today. Uh, please uh, stay to the entirety of this video. Uh, at the end of this video, I want to take some time and talk about the Federal Reserve's options and why basically they have no options and why so many people just believe that if the banks go under, the Fed's going to bail them out. And I'm going to tell you why that's going to be a very, very big problem and an impossibility for the Fed to do. So stay tuned uh, to the end of this video. But today I want to start with this. We got some uh, really, really bad news and markets did not like it. U.S. consumer confidence drops to its lowest level in nearly two years. Dow Jones today closes down. Markets across the board close in the red. Dow Jones was down 570 points. NASDAQ down 325 points. Now, this is right here on Axios. U.S. consumer confidence drops to its lowest level in nearly two years. Now, I want to ask all of you, please comment down below. What happened to the strong consumer that I just heard about yesterday? Now, the consumer is losing confidence, but yet we're told daily how the consumer is resilient, the consumer is strong, the household is strong, the economy is strong. Yet today, where did the confidence go? It's disappeared. I don't know how you can have a strong consumer when you have a savings rate of 3.2%, when you have over $20 trillion of household debt, when you have uh, well over a trillion dollars of consumer credit card debt. How in the world is the consumer strong? Somebody please uh, explain that to me. But the uh, strong consumer has disappeared without a doubt. CNBC Dow tumbles 570 points to wrap up worse months since September of 2022. And we better all be paying attention to the 10-year bond yield, 4.68% as I make this video, 30-year fixed mortgage rate today, 7.35%. That is according to bankrate.com. It is getting more and more difficult to borrow money, especially if you're trying to buy a house. We are seeing uh, the housing market really in lockdown. It is completely stagnant. Uh, it is not moving. Uh, buyers cannot afford to spend 7.35% uh, to borrow money on an overpriced home. Something's going to have to give. We're either going to see mortgage rates go to 2 or 3% or home prices must begin to come down. Uh, I believe at this point the Fed should raise rates uh, and force uh, some of these asset prices to come down. Home prices uh, I'm looking at homes that, you know, uh, back in 2020 were $250,000, and now in 2024, they're $800,000. We're beginning to see the not-so-strong consumer have to cut things out. CNBC, Starbucks shares sink 10% as same-store sales fall, quarterly results miss. Uh, the company's same-store sales fell 4% as traffic to its cafes declined 6%. Uh, in the quarter, no doubt the strong consumer is pulling back. They're not spending eight or nine or ten dollars on a cup of coffee. Uh, the overpriced lattes are becoming more and more difficult for the so called strong consumer uh, to go in and order on a daily basis. So, uh, this is no shock. It's amazing that it's taken this long to see such a slowdown in the economy. But I guess when you pump $7 trillion over a 30 month period, and when you have so many people who've pulled money out of their homes, uh, like ATM machines, and you have so many people that have multiple credit cards in their back pocket, uh, this thing's gonna go on for a while, and it has been. But now it is beginning to run out, and people are running out of time. McDonald's. And other big brands warn that low-income consumers are starting to crack. This on CNBC. Uh, McDonald's stock is down year-to-date 8%. And many of you have seen the $18 Big Macs. And I was just at a McDonald's with Sid a couple weeks ago when we were filming uh, some videos. And I used to go to McDonald's a few times a week for iced coffees. I no longer do that. I just make them at home now. But a coffee, and a large vanilla iced coffee that used to cost... Uh, 329 out the door is now $4.77. Um, but we know uh, that wealthier people have been eating uh, more at fast food restaurants. They've been shopping more at the dollar stores. And so 
you have to ask yourself, where are the poor people now going? If they can't afford to go to McDonald's, if they can't afford to shop at the dollar stores, because that's where the wealthy people have gone, because uh, they've had to downsize, they've had to to uh, to uh, rein in some control uh, on their finances at home. They're all feeling the inflation. Their their health insurance and car insurance and HOAs and taxes are all going up, forcing them into the WalMarts, forcing them to the dollar stores, forcing them to take their families to McDonald's. So where are the poor people going? Where are the poor people shopping? Where are the poor people eating? Uh, very, very disturbing uh, information here. Uh, another store, Kohl's. Many people uh, looking to save money go to Kohl's. Year to date, their stock is down 14.6%. We had a hun over 120,000 layoffs in April. Uh, consumer confidence, the lowest since July, yet we're being told that the consumer is strong, the job market is great, everybody's out spending money, but we're now beginning to see the cracks, and it is really the lower income of this country, the poor, uh, the lower middle class who are really feeling it. Middle class is just being annihilated and people are, are literally going broke just to, to try and stay middle class. They're doing everything they can to hang on to their cars, their houses, their lifestyle, and it's going to be very, very difficult. Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine today and he said, wow, 2024, here we are, uh, we're almost in May and it's been a barn burner year when you look at some of the events. Uh, geopolitical events, uh, financial events, the volatility in the markets, uh, leadership in this country. Uh, it, it's just been really um, unlike any other year. And things are going to continue to get more intense, I believe, as we uh, now begin to head into the summer. Uh, the hedge today, on the verge of panic, Dallas Fed Services survey suffers longest slump since Lehman. Uh, this is the 23rd straight month of contraction in the survey. Inflation, let's talk about why uh, it's the 23rd month of contraction. Just a couple of reasons. I'm just going to paraphrase through this article. Uh, in inflation keeps driving cost up. Uh, the Federal Reserve potentially delaying uh, rate cuts is causing uncertainty for the second half of 2024. Uh, employers are reluctant to hire because of continued high interest rates, inflation, and a stagnant economy. We have political uncertainty, geopolitical tensions, uh, federal regulations uh, that are increasing the cost of doing business, and the list goes on and on and on. Do you think that this is going to get better anytime soon? I really don't. Uh, we seem to just be a country spiraling out of control with no leadership, no destination. Uh, it just seems like a runaway train that has blown right off the tracks. And it, the, the carnage is, is literally everywhere. And I, when this whole thing comes to a halt and we begin to really see the damage, I, I don't think people really realize for the most part how bad things are right now because people are still driving in their cars. People are still going out to eat. Um, you know, society still is functioning. Uh, there's food on the shelves. Went to Costco last night. You know, plenty of food plenty of clothing. It's all there. People running up the credit cards. Um, and it's very, very deceiving because when you look under the water at this iceberg, uh, or if you want to use the analogy of looking at the foundation of a home and the foundation is just rotting away, um, just um, infiltrated with termites and rot. Uh, but the home uh, from up above looks wonderful. But the foundation is crippled. And uh, if you're not preparing uh, for a collapse, this thing is going to fall right on top of your heads. I was watching an interview this morning. I think it was actually filmed yesterday on Fox Business. Uh, Bar Barbara Corcoran, the real estate guru, she uh, says that there's five buyers for every home on the market. And, and, and this is, I'm using this just as an example to share that there is still FOMO out there that, you know, these people uh, on the television, people who are heavily invested in the stock market or cryptos or real estate want you to continue buying. And Barbara wants you buying. There's five buyers for every home on the market. That's interesting. Um, 
I, I don't know how that's even possible when you look at the condition when 80% of this country is living paycheck to paycheck. You look at the credit card debt uh, of, of most households right now. You, you look at uh, their wages going down. You look at their credit being damaged. You look at 30,000 car repos a day. Uh, and you look at their dependency just to, to pay the light bill with a credit card. They're, they're using credit cards just for essentials at this point. And yet she says there's five buyers right now for every home on the market. Uh, she says if mortgage rates come down just 1%, so that would put us nearly at 6.5%, she says that prices will go through the roof. Home prices will go through the roof if, if mortgage rates just come down 1%. She's all giddy and happy about it. Uh, she says everyone, everyone is going to go out and buy a house. She says at that point there will be 10 buyers for every house. There will be 10 buyers on the sideline for every house. Barbara Corcoran. Uh, this lady is out of her mind. Uh, she says everyone will charge into the market if mortgage rates just go down 1%. She says if you wait for rates to come down, you won't gain. You will lose. So you should buy now. This lady is out of her damn mind. Uh, if you really think that mortgage rates at 6.5%, that everybody's going to jump in when they're losing their jobs, uh, food insecurity, job insecurity. There's people right now that have jobs. But they're worried, are they going to have a job 30 days from now? They're worried if they're going to have a job tomorrow. Wages are going down. Inflation's going up. These people, for the most part now in America, cannot even afford their auto insurance. Uh, they, they're having a hard time shopping at Walmart. And this woman is telling us that there'll be 10 people on the sideline for every house. Um, these people, in my opinion, just my opinion, are flat out lying to you. Stop listening to the FOMO. This is the time to get defensive. Um, these people just can't. This is so similar to, to 2007 when they just kept telling you that nothing bad's going to happen. It's impossible for the housing market to crash. Prices are going to go up forever. Everybody should buy a home. And look how it, it ended. Not too well. The hedge, the only safe asset. Chinese consumers overtake India in gold buying frenzy. November. 2023, gold was sitting around $1,900 an ounce. China went on a buying binge. Chinese consumers bought, get this, 308.9 tons of physical gold. That is 10.9 million ounces of gold in the first quarter. That's a 5.9% increase compared to the same period in 2023. Chinese consumers are increasing their appetite for gold, physical gold, not the ETFs, not the paper, the physical gold, seeking to protect their assets amid a volatile stock market, just like the one we're in right now, and a depreciating yuan and property doldrums. It's happening right here. The Chinese are way ahead of us as, as a people, way ahead of us. They see the writing on the wall. They are preparing. What's the, uh, what's the uh, average uh, American consumer doing? They're going to football games. They're going to baseball games. Uh, they're getting, trying to get another credit card. Uh, they're going from credit card to credit card, paycheck to paycheck. Uh, many just will ref refusing to make any sacrifice whatsoever. Well, these people right here, they know what's coming. And I think that uh, we should take a page out of their book and pay attention to what's happening to the volatile stock market here, uh, the volatile US dollar that is continuing to buy less and less, and a housing market, not in the doldrums, but has absolutely collapsed. Just because prices are up doesn't mean that the, the housing market hasn't collapsed. Sales have collapsed. Uh, you can ask any price you want for a home, but you have to sell it. People are not, uh, right now, uh, having a very easy time selling their homes. Buyers can't qualify. Again, buyers are losing jobs. Buyers are losing their cars. Buyers' credit is coll is collapsing, um, and, and it's making it very, very difficult uh, in order for a buyer, a potential buyer, to afford to be able to buy a home. Ten-year bond yields at four point six eight, and you have a thirty-year fixed mortgage at seven point three five percent. Buyers are getting just absolutely priced out, and if sellers do not come down on price. Nothing is going to sell. And that's just what we're witnessing take place right now. I want to finish with this last article from The Hedge. I think it's extremely important. If you get a couple minutes, check it out. Do your own due diligence. I think it's a good one. It's titled, The Fed's Game of Make-Believe Comes to an End. 
uh, the Fed is running out of time and the Fed is running out of tricks, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, they are no longer able to pull rabbits out of the hat like they used to. They're at a very, very dead end here because if they raise interest rates, they're going to, to send America into a historic depression. If they cut interest rates, they're going to bring in hyperinflation to America. That's my opinion. But I'm just going to go through this article a little bit. I'm going to just kind of paraphrase a little bit. Uh, but if you get a couple minutes, check it out. The Federal Reserve rose interest rates 11 times, going from 0%, raising 11 times to about 5.5%, I believe, 5 and a quarter, 5.5%, um, which simultaneously created huge losses uh, in the bond market. They created the BTFP, the Bank Term Funding Program, a big game of make-believe. It says here, banks were allowed to borrow money from the Fed using their cratering bond portfolios as collateral. But instead of valuing the bonds at the actual market price, everyone simply pretended that the bonds were still worth 100 cents on the dollar. In other words, the banks just made up prices for their assets and the Fed allowed them to do it. Now the BTFP has expired and now the Fed has stopped playing make-believe. So maybe things are going to get more real. We shall see. The reality is... We have a lot of banks that are in very, very serious trouble, ladies and gentlemen. Probably a majority of our banks are insolvent at this point. Nobody's talking about it. Nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody wants to scare anybody. They certainly don't want to scare markets. But you need to be aware of this so that you are protecting yourself. Um, Republic First, last Friday, after markets closed, was seized by the, uh, by the FDIC. Does it mean? Does this mean anything? Apparently not, because nobody's even talking about it. Or is there more to it? Um, it's amazing how a bank, a regional bank like this, 32 branches, can be seized on a Friday night. Uh, Fulton Bank takes over Saturday. Monday morning, nobody's even talking about it. People say that the Fed will just continue to bail the banks out. Uh, people write me all the time saying, look, don't worry about it. If these banks go down, they're just going to get bailed out by the Fed. But the problem is that the biggest bank of them all, the Fed, is broke. The Fed is broke. The Fed has nearly $1 trillion in unrealized losses. The Fed has $51 billion in capital versus $948 billion in losses. This means the Fed is insolvent 19 times over. So how could the Fed bail out all these banks and how will they bail out these banks when they go under when it's insolvent? They're broke. Maybe the insolvent U.S. government could do it, but it's only insolvent by more than $50 trillion. You need to be protecting yourself. Um, the ultimate consequence is the loss of the U.S. dollar, the world reserve currency. If we lose that status, America will lose all of its power. Your standard of living, if you think it's falling right now, it will be falling at a, at a record-setting pace. We live like we do because of the world reserve currency. If we lose that status, it is game over for America. We will no longer be the world leader. We will not have the authority that we do. We will not have the influence that we do. Uh, we will be paying a lot more for gasoline. We will be paying a lot more for food. We will be paying a lot more for everything. If we lose world reserve status, it is game over for America. And this is the, the course we're on right now. This is the consequence that we're on right now. And you need to be protecting yourself because the day that that happens is the day that it's game over for America. And if you don't have real money at that point, like gold and silver, you're gonna be in very, very big trouble. Uh, make sure you have some gold, make sure you have some silver. If you need help with that, go to my link down below, SD Bullion, I've been dealing with them for over six years. Fantastic company. Uh, buy whoever you feel comfortable from, but I think that with the nice uh, pullback that we've been seeing um, this week, in the metals, maybe it's a good time to, to add a little bit more to your portfolio. If you believe that the dollar is running out of time, where else do you go? I'm going to gold, I have some silver. If you can't afford gold, buy some silver. But nice pullback today, is probably a good time to buy some of this stuff. But it's not going to zero, it's not going away. That is gold and silver. I can't say that for the US dollar. 
I think that the US dollar is on borrowed time. Does that mean it's here for another five years, 10 years, 15 years, or, or, or 15 months? Nobody knows, but what we do know for sure is it continues to buy less and less, and it takes more of those dollars to buy gold, to buy silver. It's not that gold and silver are going up, it's just that the dollar is going down, it's buying less and less, and that should tell you something. Would you rather have a, a box of gold and silver 10 years from now or a box of cash? I promise you, I guarantee you, the box of metal, precious metals, is going to have more purchasing power than that box of cash. Have a good day. Be careful out there. God bless all of you. Please like, share, and subscribe. Talk to all of you very, very soon.